So here we are again for another inspired um, edition of Good Fat Life, our Inspired Good Fat Life, our podcast, and I am off the charts excited about our guest today. Uh, she <laughs> she wears so many wonderful hats, and she's really been instrumental in my life um, because she is the owner of Gateway University and the president, and she is my, I don't know, mentor? Would that be the right word? Yes, uh, Kimberly, for uh, doing my PhD. And Kimberly is like, trust the process. And I have to say, it's been beyond my wildest expectations uh, so far. And I didn't know when I first met her and started my um, academic pursuits uh, with Gateway University that Kimberly has a really um, interesting story to tell, a fascinating story to tell that hits the sweet spot of Good Fat Life and why fat is such a good fat, right, is such an uh, important part of um, our daily nutrition. So um, I'm just going to, Kimberly, just a second, let me just promote the magazine. You know, we have a magazine, a new issue coming up that we're so excited about, and you can go to goodfatlife.com and find those details. Um, but now let's go to, let's go to Kimberly, it's Marooney, right? Marooney, yes, Kimberly, Marooney. Re Reverend Dr. Kimberly. Reverend Marooney. Dr., absolutely, Reverend Dr. Kimberly. <laughs> you are just such a wealth of accomplishments. Every time I talk to you, it's like I learned something new, and you're an author. You've, what, written 12 books on A dozen, I've published a dozen books, yep. Published a dozen books. So um, where should we start? Let's, oh, you know, I have a story that's like many people, and I'm certain that many of our listeners are having the same story or have, and that's that I was a happy young adult and till I wasn't. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, um, I was living a wonderful life. I was a newlywed. I was in a beautiful home. I was madly in love. I had a big executive career. I had the corner office, you know. I was darling cute, young. I wore these cute little silk suits with really short little skirts and, you know, giant heels. And, um, you know, I had my little leather briefcase. I was just so <laughs> darn cute. <laughs> and, and like many people I've talked to, I started to have pain. Like first it was my feet. My feet hurt so badly that I had to quit wearing those, you know, those six inch razor heels, you know. And, you know, I thought it was the end of life when I went to flat shoes and then I started having incredible stomach pain. There wasn't anything that I could eat that didn't hurt. And I could no longer wear, I finally had to give up. I couldn't wear those cute, tight little skirts anymore. I had to go to loose, baggy clothes. And oh my God, that was the like fashion death. <laughs> but, you know, I kept adjusting. And then other stuff started to happen. I started to get these horrible migraines where I would spend five days in bed with a pillow over my face because light hurt and sound hurt and everything hurt. And then, then it just kept escalating and escalating. And I finally got to the point where I was a financial planner and stockbroker. And I'd created, I'd written a financial plan for a client. We had a council of about a half dozen people with experts in different areas. I'd written the plan on Friday. I came in on a Monday morning. I grabbed my plan. Everybody was waiting for me. I'm standing up at the head of the table. I open it up to start presenting it so that they can approve what we've done in there. And I had over the weekend lost the ability to read, if you can imagine that. Oh my gosh. Wow. So I'm standing there at the head of the table looking at these papers and I can recognize letters and I can recognize kind of individual numbers, but my little brain could not make any sense out of what I was seeing. So I just, uh, I just said something like, um, well, we've talked about it all before, so um, <laughs> let's send this on out to the client. And I put it on the table and I left the room. And I went into my private little corner window office and shut the door and cried for about 10 minutes. And then I went into my boss and said, um, I'm, I'm really struggling here. I need, I need to take some time off. Wow. And so that's when I started seeking, um, I'd already been trying to get help from doctors and they'd say stuff like, well, everybody has a bad day <laughs> or gets a headache or, you know, shouldn't everybody wear those shoes. Headache, and, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. 
How, how long of a time was it between when you first started noticing kind of the first things until you literally couldn't read? It was probably a year and a half. You know, it was a long time. Okay. I was busy. I was trying to pretend like I was okay. Um, you know, I was trying to adjust as I went. And, um, you know, I just eventually got to the point where there was no more, there was nothing else I could adjust. That was it. That was it. And when I, when I came home that day, my, my newlywed husband said, oh, you're just tired, a little rest and you'll be fine. Well, you know, that's not how it happened. And that's the story for so many people. So yeah. if you're one of those people, please take this to heart because you can recover your health. You can recover your memory. You can remember how to read again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I do believe I went through fibromyalgia in my mid thirties, but a lot of the similar kinds of symptoms and everybody's, you're fine, you're fine, you're distressed, you're moving, you're not, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and a lot of that was true, right? We did yeah. move across the country with blended family and kids and all that went with that. Um, and there was something deeper. Yeah. yeah. So, so what'd you do? So tell us what happened. Well, for me, I eventually was referred to an oncologist and I thought, well, I don't have cancer. Why am I being sent to an oncologist? He was also happened to be a hematologist. So he took a blood test while I'm sitting, you know, while I'm sitting there in the lobby, do a blood test because that's what hematologists do. And he gets me in his office and he said, my God, you're almost dead. And I said, you noticed. <laughs> Why, why did not one of the 15 other doctors before you notice that? <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. Right. So, right. So in my case, it turned out that I had erythropoietin deficiency anemia, which happened to be a new thing, which meant that my um, long bones, like my legs, my bone marrow had forgotten how to make blood cells. So I had about a third of the amount of blood in my body that a normal body should have. So with that kind of deficit, um, everything shuts down, you know, who needs to think and read if you if you're barely on the edge of life. And so um, he started me on some nice treatments that that helped. So that helped, but it wasn't getting me over the hurdle. And then then a friend of mine referred me to the primal diet from Ogenus von der Planets. And that was the real turning point in my life. So medicine made a difference. But Ajanis' diet cured me. And I use that word um, cure. I don't use that often because most of the time what we do is we just kind of make our symptoms better. And uh, cures are rare and they're valuable. So um, Ajanis' high fat diet and raw meat were my saving grace. So what did that look like? I mean, how did you find that? And what so a you friend the of mine to start there. A friend of mine actually got down on his knees and said, "It hurts me so much to watch you suffer when there is an alternative. Please go see this guy Ajnas and let him help you." And so um, when he actually got down on his knees, we were in a public place. He actually got down on his knees, begging me to take this help. I thought, well, okay, I can hear that. Okay. Oh, and so I'm just curious, what was your resonate, resonance in in going that? Did he pre present it to you not on his knees? He'd talked to me a few times about it before, and I had another friend who had cancer who was on the diet. Um, but I never saw her because she was um, she was home um, sick. <laughs> sick, yeah, okay. And, and it was a big deal for me to go see Ajanis. By that point, I had very little energy. I couldn't think very well. And it was a three-hour drive for me to get there to see him. Okay. And so my, I asked my mom to come with me. And so we kind of traded off driving because my mom was also in fairly poor condition. <laughs> but we managed, we managed to get there. Um, and then, um, then there were so many steps up to his front door. I remember it was so hard for me to get up to those steps to his front door. And I, I'm telling you this because a couple of years later, I went back to that house and I looked and it was like five steps. <laughs> oh my gosh. So your perspective. So had you heard anything about the diet? Did you have any kind of reservation about, about eating fat or red meat? I had huge reservations because I had, um, 
I, I was on a deeply spiritual path and I had all these beliefs that spiritual people don't eat meat, that I should be a vegetarian. Okay. And so I've been a vegetarian at this point for about 20 years and just nearly killed myself because I have one of those bodies that does not thrive on vegetarian food. And no matter how much you try to match the beans and rice for protein, it's not the kind of protein that my kind of body needs to thrive. So I'd literally practically starved myself to death. I was very thin. Um, I was. I started out at 128 pounds, I think, when I went to see Ajnas the first time. And um, uh, he had me gain up to 185 pounds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't imagine. That had to be a real challenge. Um, oh, my God. You know, go for, for beauty queen me, I mean that literally beauty queen me. I was a beauty queen to gain from, you know, stick and bones, which is, you know, what you're supposed to be up to 185 pounds was really hard. And it wasn't right. until I got there that I understood what he was trying to accomplish because my body just couldn't digest and assimilate food. And so it took massive amounts of food to get enough, <clears throat> enough, <clears throat> excuse me, nutrients in to where my body could begin to heal. So I was eating, um, Three cups of meat, raw meat a day. Wow, and it was raw. Three cups, three cups of raw meat. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of raw meat. And in addition to that, I was eating between a half a cup and a cup of raw fat, which is raw butter, raw milk, raw cream, raw cheeses, uh, coconut cream, which is um, mm. you have to make it yourself from from a fresh coconut. For coconut. Oh, those yeah. are all delicious, though. <laughs> they, they are. It's a delicious diet and um, raw eggs. <laughs> also, oh my gosh. Fat. so wow. a lot of eggs. I was eating in the beginning. Sometimes I was eating every five or ten minutes. So I was either eating or preparing the next thing to eat all day long, from the moment I woke up in the morning till the time I went to sleep at night. And part of the time, I had to set an alarm for two o'clock in the morning and wake up and eat more. <laughs> And so how long did you do this? I did that for about 10 years. And oh my um, gosh. in the early part of my healing, it took about 10 years to for my body to get nourished, to work off of the medications I was taking, um, except one. So the, the uh, my favorite is um, I was taking cortisol because I could barely work up the energy to walk to the toilet, you know? <laughs> and That's very so important. <laughs> You know, that's really what it came down to, you know, having the energy. I saved up energy to be able to go to the bathroom, you know, to just make it that basic. And oh so gosh. I was taking cortisol. I could take the pills, I think, every every five hours. So I had my alarm watch and I'd set my alarm watch to take the next pill. And I remember distinctly about an hour and a half before I could take that pill, I'd start watching, you know, watching the clock to see when can I take that pill? When can I take that pill? because I felt just so crummy. And then for a little bit, you know, for an hour or two after I took the pill, I might have enough energy to go to the bathroom or um, maybe take a shower <laughs> you know, or prepare the next bit of food. Um, but within 24 hours after my first meals on this raw meat diet, I forgot about the pills. Because you didn't need them? Didn't, I didn't need them. So it was, and so the fat, so tell me about the fat component. The fat yeah. component. So there was fat with everything. So um, I'd start with some green juice. So I had all these formulas. At one point I was rotating three different formulas and you know, take about two hours to make each batch of juice. So it was like a major production. <laughs> and then, then, um, then I'd have cheese. So I'd have a, a a, tea, a tablespoon of raw unsalted cheese mixed with some raw honey to help it be more digestible. The honey makes it digestible. So I'm starting with cheese. Then I had a cup of, of uh, beef in the morning. So I had to cut the beef <laughs> and um, mix it with uh, raw butter and honey. And um, he had me putting cherry tomatoes in there because the, I needed the vitamin D in the cherry tomatoes. And then I and I'd eat that. And, you know, I'd been a vegetarian. So eating a cup of beef 
I was going to say that had to be he- a was, huge. It was brutal. You know, I started out, I'd hold a magazine in between my my eyes and the plate, and I'd eat under the magazine <laughs> watching television because that's the only way, you know, the first couple days, that's the only way I could do it. I didn't want to see it, you know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So with this magazine under 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 my eyes and eating underneath that. You know? <laughs> but there was but was there something in you that said this is the right thing to do? I mean there must I, have been. I felt it like each bite even though my brain was tweaking out, you know, um my mouth liked the taste, which really shocked me. And um and my body craved it. So I'd start eating and, and I could, I just, I just, you know, one bite after the other, cause my body was craving it so much. And especially, so after the meat meal, I'd wait half an hour and then I'd have a, a milkshake drink. So it was milk with raw eggs and honey and cream, fresh raw cream and some other stuff. Mm. It was delicious. And I'd take a sip of that and I, and I couldn't stop myself. I would just glug it right on down because my body was so thirsty, so starving for it. And then, you know, a little bit later, there was more cheese and more raw eggs. And then a little bit of this, there was a little bit in the afternoon, I got to have a fruit treat. So I got to have blueberries with whipped cream. Mm. Couldn't just have the fruit alone, had to have the whipped cream with it, because I had to have the fat to be able to get the nourishment out of the berries and not have the sugar, give me blood sugar stuff. So, you know, it was just one thing after another all day, these remedies. Um, one of my favorites was a custard that you make from from papaya with raw butter and raw honey and let's see it's a custard and egg you whip that up in it and it turns into a custard in the refrigerator and it is just it's so delicious for me again you know I make that and I start eating it and I just I just can't stop because my body is so starving for that good fat good fat Right. So it was that good fat that had everything be digestible, that could balance the fruit sugars, that could um, assimilate the nutrients. And another really important feature of good fat is when you're heavily detoxing like I was, like I had a lot of heavy metal poison and a lot of other uh, toxins in my body that were um, really nasty. And when they're coming out, they can damage on the way out. So the raw dairy, especially the raw cheese, protects your body from the toxins as they're being eliminated from your body. So oh, that fat wow. literally that carries the toxins out of your body in your, you know, in your stool. Wow. <laughs> well, wow. So another thing to consider. So that's quite a story. <laughs> and it was such, um, you know, it's like the... Well, you can talk about the angels in a minute as well. So the fact that we met, right, Mm -hmm. and connected, Mm -hmm. and um, you're really guiding me and helping me um, pull things together in a way to tell the story about good fat, why good fat makes such a difference in in our bodies, in our lives, in our our vibrancy, our health and well-being. And I'm just, the journey has just become so much fun. (laughs) But I love that you know that, you know that in a way that so many people don't, right? Firsthand. So. Right. Yeah, I know it from my personal experience. And the other thing that I really came to understand along my own healing journey is that we can think of good fat literally. So all of that wonderful good fat that I was eating every day. And we can also think of it metaphorically. So the good fat is also the goodness in our lives. It's our loving, supportive, kind relationships. It's our inner journey where we're looking at what is it within me that causes me to suffer? What is it, what beliefs, what um, old stuff, what old pain is lurking in there that is allowing this illness to manifest in the first place? Um, I know firsthand that the more I've released those inner demons and that inner pain, the healthier I get. So that inner journey of discovering the good fat or the goodness or the fulfillment that we have inside ourselves, the joy, bringing forward the real joy and the pleasure of living, that's the metaphoric aspect of the good fat. 
And we like to say, you know, go live your good fat life. Because Mm -hmm. if you think of fat, it's, you know, it's full, it's very rich, it's delicious, it's um, satiating, and it's all those wonderful things. And um, yeah, so, so yeah, (laughs) right, it's our good fat lives. It's well, yeah, imagine form. a diet where you're prescribed to eat whipped cream. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I remember when the um, Atkins diet came out, you know, and it was like eat cream with your eat cream. Well, you couldn't have bread anymore, but you could eat all the cream you wanted. So, yes, yeah, it was good. So, okay, so then you you got better. And, um, and then just talk, you know, if you could just talk for a couple minutes about um, your books and some of the other things. I know that you're an accomplished flautist um, at the orchestra level, which is another, uh, the orchestra is near and dear to my heart, music. And you've done quite a, quite an amazing, quite a few amazing things and very accomplished. So talk about the books. I want to hear about, who doesn't about hear about books. angels? Okay. Yeah. So, so after I got that first referral to that hematologist that helped me, I started noticing some fun things happening in my life. So as I look back, I could see that Archangel Raphael, the angel of healing, was the one that orchestrated that connection to the doctor who could help. And another thing that happened along the way was I was, I was one day I was in such agony. I was lying on the couch. I had a pillow over my head. I was in just excruciating migraine and stomach pain and leg pain. I was just, I was just in very intense pain, had a pillow over my face, had some really soft music playing in the background, real soft, gentle, you know, new age kind of music. And I, I prayed and this prayer came out of me that was really unlike anything I had ever prayed. It was actually a really scary prayer. Um, you know, sometimes prayers can be pretty scary. This this was a scary prayer. And the prayer was, Lord, I don't care what happens to me. All that matters is that I feel your love now. Wow. No bargaining there. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you do this, I'll do that. Just... Just send it to me now. And I truly wanted to die, but I did not want to die without the embrace of eternal love. That's really what I was going for. I actually wanted God to take me home on the spot. (laughs) But I also knew that anything that I probably wanted at that point was coming from a limited part of myself or an ego part of myself and not from the part of me that knew the whole picture of this Kimberly business, you know? (laughs) And so that prayer just came out of me. And again, looking back, I realized that that was uh, really the first moment of my true surrender. And I met the angel of surrender in that prayer. It was also probably my first true prayer All of my other prayers had been, um, you know, kind of religious-based bargaining, sort of, I'll do this if you do that kind of thing. So I met the angel of prayer, Archangel Zadkiel, the angel of prayer in that moment. And in that moment of surrender, I put every bit of myself into that prayer. Every ounce of energy I had physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally went into that prayer. I think it was also the first time in my life I was ever completely all in on anything. Mm. And as a result of that, my prayer was answered. The ceiling disappeared out of my house. My mystical inner vision opened, and I saw millions of angels gathering around me, holding me in this embrace of love that was unlike anything I had ever felt before. It was ecstatic. It was blissful. It was peaceful. It was joyful. I knew home. I knew the eternal me beyond my body and my personality. I knew this place of peace and love that my heart and my soul had been yearning for my whole life. And isn't isn't it interesting how it's you had to get that sick to be able to be that open 
stubbornness of ego. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's the gift. Yeah, that, that was the gift. In that moment, the pain vanished. I was no longer in pain and I was never in pain like that ever again after that. I would have some minor pain, but not that kind of searing agony that was totally crippling. And so that's truly when I met the angel of healing, Archangel Raphael, in that moment. And in that moment, there was a communication. It didn't come in words, but it came in knowing and feeling. And the request was to create a bridge to spirit to help other people. And that bridge to spirit became my angel blessings cards that were uh, published. I, I miraculously spirit guided, angel guided, found a wonderful publisher. Angel blessings cards were on the bestseller list in their genre for five years. Wow. They were in the top five for five years. <laughs> they are divinely guided. <laughs> And they're still in print. They're still in print. They're in their like 12th edition now. Uh, half a million people have had copies of Angel Blessings cards in their hands in 19 different languages all around the world. They have been truly a remarkable blessing for many people. Great. Right. And, and I'm not going to make it, um, I'm not going to make it all about good fat, but I'm so grateful that uh, yeah. You found that so that you could do this work and be this blessing, right, yeah. for all these people. And yeah. with the school, um, there's so many people that have had amazing success and um, opportunities because of meeting you and Gateway University and going to the school. And uh, it's just so many wonderful things have come from that. A absolutely. I'm so grateful that I chose to live. And I'm so grateful that I was willing to do whatever it took to stay alive. And I'm grateful that I said yes to that invitation to go to see Ajna's Fonder Planets and to follow that primal diet. So um, all of things, things have been, you know, really how good fat saved my life and brought me to the place of amazing accomplishment where I am now. I'm so proud of my life. <laughs> As you should be, right? As you should be. I've had so many incredible opportunities, and I feel so loved. Um, I'm in an amazing marriage now. I have a wonderful husband. I have a wonderful family. I have a beautiful community. I just feel so incredibly loved and supported and nurtured. And it's all because I was able to um, surrender to that good fat life <laughs> <laughs> good fat life or and also to be you know to be open um because i think that's one of the things that that we just as human beings do we get this idea in our head that this is the way it is and that's the way it is and then so you know you had the idea that you were a vegetarian and and and, and that was the right thing and we're not saying that that's not right for some people right Everybody's different, and and to be open and explore what works best for our bodies, and for ourselves. And your books are wonderful, and the oh, angel cards you. are wonderful. So, um, and it's great that they're still available. That they're all available, and I am so excited about what's what's coming. Right? <laughs> Every day, oh, yeah. it's like a full yes. of a whole new. <laughs> Well, I feel like lately my fairy godmother is dancing around me, dropping all kinds of gems and jewels into my lap because it seems like every day some new person arrives or some new opportunity arrives that is just bringing this incredible wealth of love and joy and opportunity and um, giving me the opportunity to give and share what I do best. And um, I'm, I'm just, I'm in bliss. <laughs> Well, I know that about you, and, and it is um, it is exciting. So I'm so thankful that you were able to take the time today to share with our listeners um, your story, and I hope it gives some, um, uh, what's the word, encouragement, if you will, and support, and just letting people know that whatever your journey is, that uh, there's so much, so much that here is available when we can stop and surrender. Mm -hmm. and surrender right and eat our good fat 
<laughs> Either good, bad, right? Right. right. So I want to just take a moment and do a shout out to one of our sponsors, which is Hands On Health Chiropractic. Uh, they've been just such a blessing in my life, and I know to the other people that um, have the opportunity to uh, work with them. Uh, they have, um, they're just so committed to all around health and well being. And they are amazing uh, chiropractors and massage therapists. And um, I am so grateful to have them in my life. So thank you to Hands on Health. And also, they give back to the community. They are fully committed to supporting people being their best selves. And we're just delighted to share this journey with them. So thank you to Hands on Health. And so I just invite you to check out goodfat, goodfatlife.com. We have a big summit coming in uh, October. We're really excited. It's going to be at using Good Fat Life to, um, to get good sleep um, in the evening and then how we use good fats in our day to energize us and be all that we can be. So watch for that on Good Fat Life. So again, thank you, Dr. Reverend Dr. Kimberly Marooney, for being with us today. And uh, we invite us, invite all of you, to go out and live your Good Fat Life. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What a joy.